once seen as the perfect alliance between a perfection-obsessed airline and one of the world's most powerful aircraft manufacturers, the relationship between Qatar Airways and Airbus appeared unbreakable. But then, few could have imagined that something seemingly trivial about the A350 would trigger a battle for engineering trust reputation and billions of dollars forever reshaping this once iconic partnership. So what exactly happened to the A350? What did Qatar ultimately do, and why did the battle end in a humiliating defeat? Let's find out. It's January 20th, 15, and the skies over Doha are buzzing with excitement. Qatar Airways, the ambitious powerhouse from the Gulf, takes delivery of the very first Airbus A350-900, a sleek, cutting-edge marvel that's set to redefine commercial aviation. Unlike most other customers, they're the launch partner the Trailblazers betting big on this beast. Fast forward a few years and they do it again with the bigger, bolder A350-1000. It seemed as if nothing could possibly go wrong in this perfect alliance. On paper, it was a match made in aviation heaven. Qatar Airways quickly built the world's second-largest A350 fleet, deploying these fuel-sipping giants across its sprawling global network of medium- and long-haul routes. The bond seemed unbreakable. The airline staked its reputation on these planes, marketing them as the spine of its premium service. And why not? The A350 embodied everything a modern airline craves groundbreaking tech, unbeatable fuel efficiency, and passenger comfort that helped Qatar snag Skytrax's world's best airline crown time and again. But behind the champagne, something was wrong beneath the surface. A tiny flaw, barely noticeable at first, was about to ignite one of the most explosive corporate showdowns in history. It started innocently enough just a year after the A350s hit the skies. Qatar's engineers spotted trouble the paint on these brand new birds wasn't holding up. Flaking, cracking, fading, it made their premium fleet look prematurely worn out. However, they weren't alone. Five other A350 operators whispered similar complaints to Airbus. The manufacturer acknowledged the issue and handled a warranty hiccup. They teamed up with airlines to repaint the damaged spots and tweak fixes over the years. Problem contained partnerships intact, or so it seemed. Then came 20, 20 a year of chaos for everyone but for Qatar. It was prep time for their crowning glory hosting the FIFA World Cup 2022. One A350 heads to Shannon, Ireland for a glamorous makeover stripped of its old paint and ready for World Cup colors. But as technicians stripped away the layers of paint, what emerged left everyone stunned. This wasn't just skin deep. The degradation had crept into the metallic mesh embedded between the carbon fiber structure and the outer coating a critical safety feature. This customer quickly warned Airbus, this isn't cosmetic anymore, this could jeopardize airworthiness. Clearly the carrier was afraid that the stakes hid the dangers. To understand whether Qatar ultimately made too much of the issue, let's dive into what makes the A350 a game changer and a potential risk. Unlike old school aluminum jets that expand and contract predictably with temperature, the A350 is a pioneer in carbon fiber composites, lighter, stronger, but stubbornly dimensionally stable. Paint, however, still swells and shrinks with heat creating mismatches that demand special primers for grip. Even trickier was lightning protection. Aluminum bodies let electricity zip harmlessly across the surface, leaving just a scorch mark. Carbon fiber. It's a poor conductor risking massive heat buildup and structural damage. Airbus's fix was a thin metal mesh woven into the composites to channel strikes safely. But if that mesh degrades or detaches, could it fail when it matters most? This airline was reportedly unwilling to take risks. Airbus didn't dismiss it lightly. They looped in the European Union Aviation Safety Agency for a full probe. However, their verdict was crystal clear, purely aesthetic. Sure, the paint job fell short and fixes were needed, but the lightning safeguards held firm. The planes were 100% flightworthy. Regulators worldwide echoed the all clear. Airbus pledged to keep collaborating just like with other carriers. However, for Qatar, the case wasn't closed. They flat out rejected the findings demanding a root cause autopsy, hefty compensation, and threatening to snub new A350 deliveries. Akbar Al Baker, Qatar's legendary ex CEO, a man whose relentless quest for perfection propelled the airline to stardom, but also earned it a rep for being brutally demanding. Think ironclad HR policies, zero tolerance discipline, and rejecting deliveries over the tiniest nits. Airbus had tolerated it as the cost of doing business with a VIP client. But when the airline went public questioning flight safety over what the manufacturer saw as mere cosmetics that crossed a line, the manufacturer pushed back hard, refusing payouts and standing by ESA's seal of approval. In contrast, its customer doubled down. Teaming with their National Aviation Authority, they grounded 13 A350s in August 2021, citing grave safety risks, despite zero backing from other major regulators. For Airbus, it threatened their multi-billion dollar A350 program and smeared their global safety cred. And here's where it gets juicy. Airbus called out the suspicious timing. 
The grounding occurred in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, at a time when airlines worldwide were suspending operations simply to survive. They even hinted Qatar might have leaned on their own regulators for the order scoring a twofer slash operations during the downturn while building a fat compensation case. But the airline wasn't done escalating. In January 2022, they dropped the bombshell a lawsuit in a UK court demanding $600 million up front, plus $4 million per day per grounded jet. With multiple planes sidelined, the tab could balloon into hundreds of millions fast. This carrier bet big that Airbus would cave to avoid a messy reputation tarnishing legal marathon. Yet what happened next revealed how wrong they were. They'd underestimated the European giant's fury and the ferocious counterpunch that was coming. What happened next rewrote the rules of aviation rivalries. Just when Qatar Airways thought they held the upper hand lawsuit filed planes grounded daily penalties stacking up Airbus, unleashed a response no one saw coming. It was all out war. First came the counterpunch, the aircraft provider slapped Qatar with a 200 million pounds countersuit, accusing the airline of brazen contract breach for refusing to accept brand new A350s fresh off the production line. But that was merely the opening salvo. Then the manufacturer dropped the hammer. They canceled the remaining 19 undelivered A350s on Qatar's books planes that were either already built or deep into assembly custom tailored to the carrier's exact specifications, seats, galleys, liveries, everything. Notably, these aircraft were real aircraft ready or near ready, yet the aircraft provider wiped them out without hesitation. But here was the true killer blow. Airbus reached into the darkest corner of aviation contract law and pulled the pin on what insiders call the nuclear option, the cross-default clause. This obscure but ferocious provision links multiple contracts like dominoes. If you seriously breach one deal, the other side can torch every related agreement. And that's exactly what the manufacturer did. They canceled Qatar's entire order for 50 A321neos. 50 state-of-the-art narrow-body jets vanished overnight. For the Gulf carrier, this was a gut punch to their very future. The A321neo was meant to be the workhorse driving their aggressive expansion into short and medium haul markets, new routes, higher frequencies dominating the region. This order wasn't peripheral, it was the core of their growth strategy for years to come. Making the pain excruciating is that the A321neo was, and still is, the hottest ticket in aviation. Demand had exploded with nearly 5,000 on backlog. Delivery slots were scarce new customers faced waits of 5, 6, or even 7 years. By ripping away this customer's slots, Airbus didn't just deny them planes, they handed those precious positions to competitors on a silver platter. For an airline obsessed with rapid expansion, this was borderline existential. Qatar Airways scrambled into damage control rushing back to the London courts with an urgent plea, treat the A321neo contract as completely separate block the cross default and declare it invalid. They argued fiercely that one dispute shouldn't doom an unrelated deal. But clearly everyone knew the truth that the European manufacturer had just rewritten the power dynamic in supplier-customer relations. But this is where things start to get truly interesting and deeply satisfying. With Airbus's forceful retaliation orders slashed and growth prospects gutted Qatar Airways, found itself cornered by a crisis of its own making. The FIFA World Cup 2022 was only months away set for November, and millions of fans were expected to flood into Doha. This was supposed to be the carrier's moment of glory with its flagship airline carrying the world to a desert spectacle. But instead, dozens of state-of-the-art A350s sat motionless on the tarmac, trapped in a standoff Airbus refused to yield. Capacity was draining away, and behind the polished facade, panic began to take hold. In a frantic pivot, this customer did the unthinkable. Barely a week after losing the A321neos, they stunned the industry by announcing one of the quickest mega deals ever, 25 Boeing 737 MAX 10s on firm order, with options for 25 more. It was a lifeline or so it seemed to plug the gaping hole in their narrow body expansion. But that was a huge irony. Here was Qatar Airways, the self-proclaimed champion of uncompromising safety grounding perfectly airworthy A350s over unwarranted concerns only to commit to the 737 MAX, a jet freshly scarred by two catastrophic crashes that claimed 346 lives and a worldwide grounding. Critics pounced. Was this really about safety or just ruthless leverage gone wrong? Some people said that the move painted this airline's stance as hypocritical whispering doubts across the industry about whether their safety fears were genuine or a high-stakes bluff. Behind the headlines, the real crisis was operational chaos. 
This airline had gambled that Airbus would blink first offer massive compensation rush repairs and preserve the partnership with their biggest customer. But the European giant stood firm, backed by global regulators declaring the A350 safe. At that time, with the World Cup clock ticking, Qatar faced a capacity crunch of epic proportions. Those gleaming A350s meant to handle the surge were going nowhere. Desperation bred bold, expensive moves. First, they dusted off their aging A330 fleet, nearly 50 strong at one point, but half-retired or mothballed long-term post-pandemic. Reviving 14 of them wasn't cheap. Unmothballing involves draining and treating fuel-replacing fluids and meticulous engine preservation checks. Each bird demanded millions of hours, sometimes months of work piling on a staggering financial burden just to keep schedules afloat. If that stung, what came next was pure humiliation. This carrier hauled all 10 of their Airbus A380 Super Jumbos back into service, the very beasts they'd sworn off forever. Back in 2019, Akbar Al Baker had shocked the world by vowing to retire them after just five years, publicly calling the A380 his biggest mistake. Fuel-guzzling giants he'd raged. But with no alternatives and the World Cup demanding every seat possible, pride took a back seat. Reactivating these giants was even pricier and more complex than the A330 special liveries for the event crew retraining and the works. It had played hardball thinking it was a smart negotiation tactic. Instead, they'd backed themselves into a multi-billion dollar corner. Besides, on the legal front, blows kept landing. UK courts upheld Airbus's cross-default clause as ironclad green lighting the A321 Neo wipeout. Then in January 2023, a judge demanded hard proof for Qatar's safety-based groundings. Crickets. However, just 11 days later, February 1, 2023, a bombshell, a secret, amicable settlement. No liability admitted, but the timing screamed surrender. The Gulf carrier lacked the smoking gun to back its claims in open court. The price of peace was steep. Airbus reinstated the A350s and A321 Neos orders launched repairs to get grounded jets flying again. But deliveries were delayed. This saga wasn't just a commercial flop, it was a public humiliation that reached the top. Months later, in late 2023, the legendary Akbar Al Baker stepped down as CEO after 27 transformative years. His successor promised a new era of trust and empowerment, a subtle jab at the old regime's iron-fisted style. In the end, Qatar's aggressive gambit backfired spectacularly. What started as pressure for concessions ended in hundreds of millions lost operational mayhem, delayed dreams, and a leadership shakeup. And that fleeting Boeing commitment by 2025 with Airbus ties mended and max delays dragging on the airline quietly canceled the 737 MAX 10 order altogether, recommitting to their European partner. Thank you for joining us today and we wish you safe and enjoyable flights.